and welcome to another video. My name is uh, Dr. Lasker. I'm a consultant radiologist and I'm actually on the way to work. So this is kind of um, a make use of some of the time I have sitting in this car. A couple of questions I've been asked on my YouTube channel. One of them is about artificial intelligence. You know, every time I ever tell anyone I'm a radiologist or someone says to me, hey, should I do radiology? The first question they ask is about artificial intelligence. And I get it, you know, computers are scary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, some cars may even drive themselves. Anyway, yeah, I think people have always been uh, massively interested and obsessed with computers and what computers can eventually do for, you, for us. And, um, you know, when you think back at the first computer and what it was capable of doing, it wasn't really capable of doing all that much. I mean, it wasn't that much more powerful than a wristwatch. And I'm not even talking, you know, Apple smartwatch material. I'm talking about Casio, you know, the one that even has a, the world time and a stopwatch. That's as, that's as powerful as it got. And it took the size of an entire room. I mean, things have progressed quite quite quickly. And even in my lifetime, you know, the mobile phone, I mean, this, this thing here is just incredible, isn't it? I mean, considering the number of gadgets that back in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up, that you needed to be carrying around to have the equivalent of a mobile phone. We're talking camcorder, Walkman, um, you know, this big fat phone. Uh, there's just so many, you know, Game Gear, Nintendo, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I mean, that's, that's what it used to be back in those days. And it's, things have just moved so, so quickly that all of that's just available in the palm of your hands, which is just absolutely incredible. I'm not gonna say that artificial intelligence will never take over. I mean, look at how far computers have got and how much they can do already. It's just absolutely amazing, isn't it? And so um, with that being said, what I'd like to say to anyone out there that's thinking about radiology, is that, look, if that's something you're afraid of, there's nothing really I can do about that. I mean, you may, maybe you're the kind of person that came into medical school thinking about what the future holds, whether people, you know, even want doctors in the first place. You've got health practitioners, nursing practitioners, you've got so many, you know, pharmacists are doing very sort of what we quotation marks say, doctory jobs these days. And um, you may feel as though there's not going to be much of a space for you. And for those kind of um, individuals, there's not really much I can say to try and help you and appease your, your worries. And I think Life is not, um, from what I can tell so far in my short existence, I guess I've been around longer than some of you guys. Um, it's like, you can only plan so much. You can only plan so much. And I think life is too short to not do the things that you like. Um, and, um, well, I, you know, within reason, you know, just if you, if you don't do things that you like just because you like it, because you have to think about, is it gonna pay me? Is it gonna, you know, give me a lifestyle that I would like? And that kind of thing. But um, I, I don't think so much thought really went into me doing uh, radiology in the first place. And we can go into that if we've got time on this journey. Um, but when it comes to um, artificial intelligence and healthcare, it starts to get a little bit dodgy. And I think Elon Musk and Tesla and all these kind of guys who are trying to get, you know, artificial intelligence and, and, um, uh, and you know, autopilot to, to, to come about, the big issue seems to be a moral issue, really. Like, who who's looking after the car? Who's in charge of the car if and um, you know if things go wrong? And that's a very legitimate question. But then behind that is the expectation that there is something and someone to blame. And ideally, uh, in a lot of these circumstances, you want a human being to blame. And that may be the corporation and the person behind the corporation. And in the in the case of healthcare. It may be the doctor that you're not essentially looking to blame, but you're trying to give responsibility to. And so the issue starts to become like, OK, so let's say you've got artificial intelligence that's going to start reading scans. It's nothing's ever completely infallible. I mean, you, you bought mobile phones, haven't you? And they don't quite work or you bought something and you've been like, oh, this hasn't worked. And it just seems to be the one in a thousand or whatever it is that came out of that factory that doesn't quite do what it's meant to do. And you give it back. And the same thing for artificial intelligence and all of that stuff there's going to have to be a margin of error. And then when things go wrong, who is going to be to blame? Is it going to be the corporation that made it? Or are they going to pass the, the buck on to the lonely radiologist who apparently has not very much to do with their job? Now, we come back to healthcare and think about um, what are people's expectations of healthcare at this particular point in time? And I, I do see, I do foresee this to be the case moving for many, many years. Um, because generally speaking, when it comes to healthcare, people still value a human interaction. 
they still value a person-to-person -person interaction, someone that they can go to and talk to about things. And you may feel as though radiologists, all they really do is do a report and then that's it. But there is a little bit more thought that goes behind a report in terms of balancing what is happening, what is going on with the patient, um, the overall clinical picture, and what is available to you in the hospital at that present time to be able to say what next investigation needs to be done, etc., etc. But people do expect um, a certain level of human interaction. And I don't think we've really got to the stage where people, doctors, patients themselves are in a situation where they're going to be comfortable just going to a computer which is going to tell them everything that needs to be done. Even on an emotional level, you can't relate to a computer. You can't, you can't get that emotional feedback from a, from a computer. Or from a radiologist's point of view, th let's say you're doing ultrasound, you're doing interventional procedures, um, then you know you can't, it's going to be difficult to replace that human, human interaction, the ability to be able to relate to another person when you're doing the scan. And um, also with doctors themselves, like even at this present time, we do have a situation where you're able to get blood results and even have all the abnormal blood results highlight, highlighted in red. And the computers can actually technically say, this is anemia, this is this, this is this. And it can do a lot already, but you, people still don't want to just get a blood result and have no one to talk to. I mean, that's what they want someone to talk to. Even if you go up and down the country, you'll find these health clinics and they take a blood test and all that's really happening is they're doing these bog standard blood tests and getting someone who may be qualified or semi-qualified to talk through the blood test with someone. And there seems to be a premium for that. I think as long as healthcare has an expectation that there's going to be some sort of human interaction involved, then I think there's still going to be a place for a radiologist. I, re I really, really do. And so that kind of brings me on to what a radiologist really does. So radiologists, what do they do? Yes, you're right. We kind of look at pictures, we do the report, and then we move on. That, that may be the case. But then, you know, there is, like I said, a balance in how you write the report. There is a nuance to writing a report. It's not just saying this is abnormal and this is abnormal. You are thinking about the next step, the next step, the next possibilities of what is really happening. And, and you're balancing things with what's available in your region, what kind of services that you can give, and the people that you're working with. What you'll find is that some doctors will only work with certain radiologists, or they prefer to work with certain radiologists, or they'll read the report and be like, oh, who reported that? And then they'll look and say, oh, okay, it's this person. Okay, fine, I, I'll, I'll take that report. Um, and so that shows you that even on that level, people have an expectation of the person behind the report. It's not just a report. And then you've got the other things that radiologists do in terms of intervention, in terms of ultrasound guided procedures, CT guided procedures, uh, and that kind of thing. So at least for now, as long as there's that expectation that on some level there's going to be human interaction somewhere along, along the line, be it for communication purposes, be it for that, uh, or be it just for blame purposes, then I think there's always going to be a place for radiologists uh, in the world of radiology. Um, I hope that's useful. I, I hope that's uh, you know, a point of view that I've been able to carve out of the, the little free time that I have these days. Um, anyway, till next time. Uh, if this goes all right, then I, maybe I'll do more videos uh, while driving, well, being driven uh, in the car to work. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you do like this video, do like and subscribe. I really do appreciate every single um, person that interacts with me, follows me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and all of that. I, it's amazing to me um, that my little uh, existence uh, and opinion and jokes and all the rest of it, I don't know, help someone out there. Anyway, until next time, bye.